Hello, Bobcat parents, class of 2023. I am going to go over our senior meeting we had today. So you are in the loop as much as your kid. I know sometimes we don't always get all the information that we should that the school shares with your kids. So we're going to handle it this way this year. All right. So first order of business. If you are not in the loop on any of these communication channels, they all are great. Uh, I would highly recommend the uh, counseling newsletters that come out in email or on Schoology and the Remind. We get lots of information communicated through the Remind as well. As we get closer and closer um, to graduation and to senior week and all the things, if all else fails and you don't see something on there, you can email me. I'm the Academy Principal for the Academy of Interdisciplinary Research, but one of my additional admin responsibilities is seniors. So if you have a question, you can get with me. Okay, I gave your student today a handout that has all of the dates on it from today, the 12th, until May 18th when they graduate. So. Anything that's happening in our lives is going to happen on this calendar. So I recommend taking a picture of it and keeping it around. So here's some info. The next two weeks are EOCs and many seniors don't take an EOC, but we wanted to be sure and be clear about our expectations here. Um, attendance could affect eligibility for their exemptions. So if your kid has the grades for being exempt for their exams, we don't want their attendance to mess that up. So they cannot miss three class periods um, or more per period. And the teachers report to us who's exempt and who's not. So that is by class, it's not by day. Um, college visits are excused absences, but they can only have two of them the whole year. So if they used one earlier in the year, then this week would be a good time to have another one. Um, in order to kind of prove the college visit, students can bring in a picture of them on campus, um, an email where they scheduled an appointment. I think in the in the COVID times, we allowed virtual college visits, but that's not something that's an excused absence now that we're kind of back to normal, more or less. Senior exams are coming. If your kids aren't exempt, then their exams will start the second week of May. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but there's going to be a lot of review happening in the next couple of weeks. So um, consider that before you all opt to, for them to stay home. We'll also start handing out cap and gown the second week of EOCs and English classes. So don't miss an English class if you are going to be out during those two weeks. So plan on being here. And of course, the only exception here is reduced schedule. If a student isn't assigned to a third or a fourth block class, then they don't have to come that day. So for example, if your student has reduced schedule and they don't have a fourth block, they'll be able to leave on the 27th or the 20th after this first morning class. So we have plenty of students that are reduced schedule on third block and fourth block. So they won't have to come at all on the 20th or the 27th, depending on A day or B day. So just something important to keep in mind. All right, since we're gonna have some extra time in the next couple of weeks for EOCs, one of the biggest things that are all of our kids have to do right now is this zone to grow. Um, once your kid logs in Clever, they will see an icon that looks like this. It may not be favorited, but it's somewhere on the page. It says Sewn to Grow. This is a platform we use to monitor students' social, emotional learning and mental health. Um, there are monthly reflections. Many of them have already done the monthly reflections in their senior English class, but if they haven't, no big deal. They need to do their, their monthly reflections. Um, and be aware that this is monitored by AI. And so the reflections aren't considered complete unless they're answered in complete sentences. So for example, I saw a kid yesterday that said in response to a question, I'm feeling good. No, they just said feeling good, two words. And it got flagged as like an incomplete response. But a kid that says like, I'm feeling good today or I'm feeling good about this issue, that would count as complete. Um, also, if they, it, it flags something that may worry us. So if a kid's talking about their mental health as suffering or they've had a hard time or they've had a loss, it does send us an email so that we can check in with a kid, which is great. And that's what we want. But we just want kids to know that. Um, the other thing, which let's look at this together. So there's the monthly check ins, just, you know, talking about your goals, things that make sense to think about right now. This is where you want to be looking. 
to change from the student reflections to our checklist. So you'll click that cycle box and change from this screen to this screen. Almost no kids have done this yet because it just opened on Monday. So we want our kids to take the time to do this the next couple weeks so that they'll be able to get their graduation tickets because this is one of the items to get their tickets. Um, this is literally just a check in. I mean, a checklist like did I participate in a college fair? Check. Did I participate in an industry related field trip? Check. The ones that will take some time are these two surveys. I am going to attach uh, to my newsletter or my handout some QR codes to scan to get to these more directly. Otherwise, they have to copy and paste them. And it's kind of a pain. So um, the surveys include information about scholarships. I want to be sure and tell our kids they need to include all scholarships, not just ones they're taking advantage of. Last year's senior class got something like 15.2 million. We would love to beat that this year with class of 2023 to show all the scholarships they earned. So for example, if your kid got into MTSU and UT, but they're going to MTSU, put all the scholarships down, even that they got to both of the schools, not just the school they're taking advantage of. Okay, so that's sewn to grow. Now, cap and gown. Again, we're going to start doing pickup week. I mean, pick up through English classes, the second week of EOCs. Um, if you miss your English class, you'll see Miss Spear. She'll be able to help you get your cap and gown. Um, don't wash them, don't dry them, don't iron them, it will melt them. So try to keep them in pristine condition and for sure keep all the pieces together because if you don't have all the parts, then we're not going to let the kids walk. We pride ourselves on having a really nice looking and clear graduation. And so we want to be sure that our kids have all the pieces to their regalia. Uh, I emailed all students this morning who have not paid their senior dues. It's just about 50 kids, so we're making good progress on that. The deadline to pay these is May 1st in order to participate in graduation and senior week. Um, if your student is still finishing credit recovery, they may not be listed as a 12th grader. And only students that are listed as a 12th grader can pay for the senior dues. So that's why these two deadlines are the same. May 1st is the deadline for dues and May 1st is the deadline for um, credit recovery to get that done. Um, we use the dues for all kinds of things, for senior week, for security, for the senior breakfast that the kids are going to have the morning of. So pay these online. There's the QR code there. It's um, MNPS School Cash Online. That's the site that should come up and you register and pay the dues that way. All right. First week of May, we are going to have some fun. Um, so this is, of course, only for students who are on track to graduate, who are listed as a 12th grader and not failing a class that they are currently in. Um, so Monday, we'll have a surprise. Uh, it's not going to disrupt class. It's something that we'll hand out in class or at lunch. On the second, we're going to have a talent show during fourth block. So they'll miss their fourth block and it'll be a faculty student senior only talent show. On the third, um, we'll start handing out graduation tickets. More on that in a second. Uh, senior week, we, oh, we'll have field day, last block. That's going to be exciting. And um, that will, again, be during the fourth block class. And then another surprise on Thursday. And then Friday after school, we'll have a student and faculty basketball game. And there'll be some like VIP senior seating. So get excited for senior week. All right. After senior week, we're going to go straight into senior exams. So Monday will be just a normal day. Nothing exciting happening. If your student is exempt from every exam, May 8th will be their last day at Overton. They'll come and have a normal day and then they won't have to come any of these days if they are exempt. If they are not exempt, then we're going to follow this order for senior exams. So Tuesday, they'll come in and have a normal 1B, 2B. They'll probably do some review. Then they'll have their 3B and 4B exams. Tuesday, come in, have a normal 1A, 2A, and then they'll take their exams during 3A and 4A. On Thursday, they'll come in and do their 1B and 2B exams, and then they can leave. Same thing on Friday. They'll come in, take their 1A and 2A exams, and then they'll leave. Um, Whenever your kid's last exam is, is when they will get their checkout and they'll come in the library, turn in their laptop, you know, kind of sum up any business they need to sum up. We'll go over the checklist in a second and then they'll be done and they'll be they won't have to come back to Overton until it's time for the senior breakfast on the 17th before rehearsal. Um, so 
if your kid finishes with their 4A exam and they're exempt from everything else, then they don't have to come these two days. They only come on days where they have an exam. Uh, just while we're here, I had some space on this slide. Don't forget, if any student has a library book, uh, they need to turn those in too. We want those back so other kids can enjoy them next year. All right, so we're moving along in our kind of calendar. We've, we've gotten through the 12th. They've taken their exam. The next day after the end of senior exams is prom. Prom is at the Martin Center, and it is an incentive this year, which means you don't just automatically qualify to go to prom. You had to have earned your way there, and we told them this in first semester. We told them in our January meeting when we came back, and I emailed all the kids in February that weren't eligible so that they would know, like, hey, you may miss out on this opportunity if you're not careful. So we've communicated with them a whole lot, and hopefully we've got um, everybody kind of in the loop on that. Ticket sales will end the 12th. There's a QR code for you to be able to buy the ticket there. Um, tickets are $60. So your student got an email this morning if they were eligible or not. So check their email to find out if they are eligible. For tickets for graduation, again, we're pivoting here. This is not for prom, this is for graduation. For graduation, students only get 10 tickets. There are no additional tickets. I thought there were going to be, but there's not. That's a hard rule from MNPS, 10 tickets per student. We are going to distribute those on May 3rd for seniors in good standing and who are exempt. So if, if a kid already knows they're going to be exempt, we'll start letting them kind of check out and sum up their business early. Um, otherwise, they need to come in after their exam, turn in their laptop, do all the things. The very last opportunity for anybody to get their tickets is going to be May 17th at 2.15. So we're not going to hand out tickets on the day of graduation. People need to get their all their items checked off their to-do list in order to get their tickets by 7th, May 17th at 2.15. If your student is in danger of um, not graduating because of a current grade, they will have to have a form that is signed off on by their counselor. So, for example, in the Air Academy, our counselor is Mr. Van Dries. We have a couple students who are failing classes they need to graduate right now. And so they will be following a different process than kids who are not in danger of not graduating. So they'll have to get their form signed for us to hand over their tickets. All right. We're getting closer and closer to the real deal. On May 17th, we have a senior breakfast from 8 to 9.15 in the cafeteria. It's really just one last time to be together before it's graduation. Um, it's optional. If your student doesn't want to come, that's totally fine. It's just something fun. And then um, we will ride over. If, if you want to, let me move my face here out of the way. Um, if you want to ride the bus with us, um, or if you don't have transportation and you just prefer to ride the bus, sign up here. Use this QR code to sign up. Uh, you have to be logged into your MNPS email for it to work. But um, we will drive your kids from the breakfast down to mun municipal. We'll have rehearsal and then they'll ride back with us. Otherwise, students can drive downtown, park wherever they can figure out to park, um, and we'll all have rehearsal from 11 to 1. Students 100% have to attend rehearsal if they are going to walk. If they don't attend rehearsal, they cannot participate in the ceremony because we just have too many things to figure out. So again, if you want to ride, sign up ASAP on that link. All right, let's talk about the big day. So students can arrive at 445. You need to be on time for that so we can get everybody organized. Um, they will enter through the entrance that says backstage. It literally is above the door. It says backstage and you'll look for the red and black balloons and that's where you can drop them off or they can park and walk in that way. Uh, for attire, we like to keep it looking very classy. So students need to wear dark or tan or nude shoes. Um, whatever bottoms you're wearing, pants, dresses, whatever, if they're longer than the robe, they need to be dark colored so that they're, um, you know, pretty uniform with the robe. They can be navy blue, black, brown, just dark. Uh, if you are wearing pants, they should be wearing a white shirt and dark colored ties. Again, the biggest thing is whatever we see outside of the gown needs to be a uniform color. Caps cannot be decorated. If it is decorated, they're not going to be allowed to participate in the ceremony. So we know that's kind of a special thing that people do. I recommend buying one off Amazon, decorating that one for pictures, but keeping the school issued cap 
undecorated for their ceremony. We will hand students out who have earned academic honors. Um, they get cords to wear. We will hand those out as they go up on the stage. So any student that has um, unapproved regalia like jewelry or other cords, anything like that, flags, nothing like that can be um, displayed outside of the, the gown. It has to be um, just the approved regalia that we hand them as they walk up. Okay. Of course, we don't want the kids on their phones during the ceremony. So I recommend um, a crossbody bag, a little one, or some pockets in your pants or dress so that you can slip your phone in during the ceremony, maybe a bottle of water. If people are going to wear heels and they are going to have uncomfortable shoes, you may want to put a backup pair of shoes in that bag. Um, it is not the day to wear high heels if you've never worn high heels before. The There's a lot of walking, especially downtown, and I just get so sad when I see girls walking downtown barefoot at eight o'clock at the end of graduation because they wore the wrong shoes. So be smart about the shoes that you wear. Um, we will have the ceremony live stream for anybody that can't make it to the ceremony or doesn't have a ticket. So check the MNPS Facebook page and we'll also share it on our communication channels. Doors will open for ticket holders at five o'clock. So everyone age two and up has to have a ticket to come in and ticket holders will come through the front doors where there's a security check. So once you've gone in, you can't go back out. So be sure not to exit until you're ready to just wait outside. Um, students, their, their ticket is their cap and gown. So they are not counted in the 10 as, um, as a ticket. They don't need a ticket. Their ticket is their cap and gown. Okay, this was what your kids should be paying the most attention to in the coming weeks. This is the checkout list for getting the tickets that you're all eagerly awaiting. So they have to have paid their senior dues. Again, most students have done this. If they didn't, they got an email today. They have to do their two Sewn to Grow tasks, including the links embedded in Sewn to Grow. So we will be asking them to do that if they haven't done it, we're going to send them back at the end of the line. They're going to have to do it before they can check out. Of course, they have to pass their current classes. They have to finish their credit recovery. Again, most students have passed their civics test. We've been in touch with those that haven't, and we'll get that knocked out. Lastly, something we really haven't talked about, but it's a good thing to keep in mind, is if students have files that they want to keep on their school computer, here's more information. <coughs> on how they can move their files to a personal drive. Um, a lot of times kids have made resumes, they've written papers, done projects, and we want those to be accessible to them after they graduate, but their MNPS email will be deleted as soon as they graduate. So we want them to do that pretty quickly. Related to that, um, if students have signed up for any websites or subscription services using their MNPS email, they need to go in and change the email associated with that account because they are going to lose that as their as their official email account from us. Um, students, of course, are going to have to turn in their laptop. If they have not turned in the laptop, they're going to be listed as stolen via a police report. That's a new MNPS policy where we just really want to hold students accountable for getting those machines back to us. So um, get with us if that's going to be an issue returning that laptop. Otherwise, we want the laptop back. And then lastly, we have a very small number. I'm talking like five kids who owe fees. So I emailed all those students this morning. I've heard back from almost all of them. Um, there are only five people. So pay your fees if you owe fees, but probably doesn't apply to many people. And lastly, the checkout and ticket handout will be in the library. So whenever your kid finishes their exam, they need to swing by the library. We'll have stations set up where they can check out and um, get their tickets. And then we'll see them at uh, breakfast on the morning of rehearsal. Just one more time, let me go back here to clarify attendance because this was a good question we got at the end of our session this morning. So students, if they are exempt, their last day will be the 18th. If they are not exempt, their last day will be the 12th. No senior has to come to school on the 15th and 16th. Nobody, no, there's nobody looking for seniors on the 15th and 16th. On the 17th, they can come to school if they want to for this breakfast, breakfast but we're not taking attendance. There won't be any penalty for not being there. Um, we'll just see them at 11 at the rehearsal, which is required if they want to walk in graduation. So, all right, reach out to me if you have any questions. I appreciate uh, you all taking the time to watch the video and 
Go class of 2023.